to green, there he is. Let's restart, red, there he is. I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. And before we get into the video, just a massive shout out to my Patreon supporters, James Welch, Basic Terra, Cole, Tomorrow Alex, Xan, Retro Galaxy, Clone 13, Foozal CC, Space Buy, Fan Van, and Jet Simon. If you want to check out all the benefits on offer for becoming a Patreon, there's a link in the description. So go check it out if you want to get yourself some free game assets, pixel art, and music on a monthly basis. Okay, welcome back to another easy game mechanic tutorial. I recently ran a poll on my YouTube community page asking which tutorial you'd like to see next and with an overwhelming majority of 52% everybody chose player select screen. We're going to start with an easy one where we can select two different players and then we'll do something a little bit more complicated straight afterwards. So stick around till the end so you don't miss anything. First of all I've got two sprites on the screen. There's nothing special about these sprites they have no behaviors no instance variables it's just a green square with two frames a red one and a green one the animation speed is set to zero and it's not looping and all i've done is copied it out and set the initial frame on the second one to one which is the red square i've got a second layer a uh, second layout which will be acting as our hypothetical level one which the player will be in based on which player we choose so we need to add in a few things firstly we need to add in the mouse so double click click on mouse and now we need to go back to the event sheet and add an event. And then we can say mouse on object clicked. Left click and we're going to select the player. On left clicking the player, we need to then run a check. So hit B on the keyboard with the event selected and that'll give you a sub event. Double click on the sub event and now we need to check the player's frame. So click on the player and compare the frame. If the frame is equal to zero, so basically if it's the green one, and also we need to do that a second time and copy that down and change the frame to one, which means it's the red one. So now what we've got here is if we click on the player and the frame is equal to zero, do whatever action we put in here. If the frame is equal to one, then do whatever action we put in here. So what are those actions? The first thing we need to do is go to the second layer, the second layout and clone this object because this object is just a representation of these two sprites here, which is the player. And I'm gonna change the name of it just for the sake of confusion. I'm gonna call this player icon because these are the icons of the player on the title screen. And this one here is just gonna be the actual player character, the one that will be moving around. It's going to have the exact same two frames because, again, we want to make sure that that correlates to what we're clicking in the title screen. So we go back here. So we click on the player icon now. You can see it's changed in there and the frame is zero. Then we want the player character to set frame to one. So on one, it needs to set frame to one. On zero, it needs to set frame to zero. Now let's add a global variable. So right click, add a global variable. And then we're going to call this global variable player selected and it's going to be a number and it's going to correlate to the frames on our player in fact let's not make it a number let's make it a string and we'll default it to player one so if we click on frame zero then what we're going to do is we're going to set that global variable value of player selected player one and if we click on the second one here, we're going to set that value to player two. So that then tells our global variable which player we have selected. Now on our second layout, we need to make sure we are linking the correct event sheet, which we are. Now we're going to say another event. We're going to add another, we're going to add another event and we're going to say system and we're going to compare that player selected variable. If it's equal to player one, and I'm going to copy and paste that out again and change player one to player two and say if it's equal to player one then what we want to do is set that player character frame to zero and I'm going to move these down here and this will be a better way to control it because that global variable will be valid across all of our layouts and all of our game so we can click on that action go to layout two 
and then copy and paste that down. So what we've effectively got here is if we click on the player icon, if the frame's equal to zero, we set the selected player, the player selected global variable to player one, and then go to layout two. And then if it's frame one, we go to layout two again, but we set the player selected global variable to player two. And then we've got these two little conditions, these two little events down here that say, if that global variable equals player one, then we set the player character frame to zero, otherwise we set it to one. So there we go. And there we go. So depending on the player that we select, we're going to get a different color. And that works really well if you're just having colors of the same player. But if you've got two individual um, player sprites, then you're going to want to do something a little bit different. So what we'll do is we'll go over here to the objects. Uh, so in fact, we'll go to the player character on the layout too, and I'm going to duplicate him again. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and make um, different animations, but this would effectively represent two different characters. If we just change this one, if we delete the first frame and just make that one one frame which is red, and this one one frame which is green, then these would effectively be our two characters. Now, obviously, we're going to need to put the only the one that we've selected in the game. So we're going to have to take them both out for the moment. Now, going back to the event sheet, what we've got now is if we click on the player icon in this frame zero, we're going to change it to player one, and that just changes this frame. So we're going to get rid of these two lines of actions there. Everything else can pretty much stay the same, except what we're going to need to do now here is say system create object and we're gonna to have to create the player character object uh, it's gonna be layer 0 because that's the only layer that we're working with and the X and Y position will be the spawn in point and we'll look at that in a second but the next thing I want to do is add in the action for the second one and I'm gonna say system create object and that object is gonna be character player 2 again layer 0 because that's the only layer that we have in fact, I've got this camera layer here, but we don't need that that was a previous tutorial I can delete that Let's delete that one. So for player, uh, for layout two, we now need to dis determine where the spawning point is. Now, if you you can hard code it in, if you just know exactly, for example, that it wants to be there, you could just pick these coordinates over here: 144 and 320. You could have a spawn point. So if I double click, let's put that in. That might look nice. Click, click a sprite. Let's make it eight by eight. I'm just going to color it blue. Oh, set the origin to the middle uh, out to the top left and I'm going to call this one spawn point it's not going to be initially visible I'm going to put it there is that what I'm going to do I'm going to bring it up a little bit and we're going to add the platform behavior to these two guys so just click on any one of them, add the behavior. This will make them fall out of the sky. And I think it'll be quite nice if they fall out of the sky and then land on the platform. Get the same thing to this one. And again, if you had two different characters in the game that you could potentially pick, then you would you'd still have that same. You'd have the, the, the behaviors already on there. So that's not visible when we start, so that won't be seen, but it will be our spawn in point. So now we go back to the player. And for the X value, we just select the spawn point dot x and the spawn point dot y. So we're going to spawn it in directly at that point. Same on the other one. Spawn point dot y. And now these guys will immediately spawn from there. Now what I also want to do is because if we leave, if we go to the game screen like this, these guys will just fall because there's nothing for them to land on. So it's always a good idea for things like this, just so you don't have these objects in the game that the game has to account for um, that aren't effectively being used. I'm going to give them the destroy outside layout behavior as well. So immediately when the game's created, they'll be destroyed until we need to spawn them in. We should just go practice, really. So now let's go back, play it, click on the green one and we're going to be spawning him in indefinitely let's just check it makes makes uh, it works for the red one it does but we only want that to happen once so because this variable 
Um, at the moment, this reads, if player selected equals player one, then create that object. And because it's always equaling player one, what it's doing is it's creating a new instance of that every tick over and over and over again. So we can simply just use the trigger once in a sub event. So click, remember, click B on the keyboard to get a sub event. Double click system and then go to the bottom and it will say trigger once while true and we bring that down and then we can just copy and drag that down hold down control and drag that down oh actually we don't need that one so now it just says if it equals player one trigger once only select the right player so green there he is let's restart red there he is and we can move red around and do our jumps because he's got the platform behavior we can move green around and these can have two very different fields you could set the platform behavior up differently you could give one diff different abilities and put them in different events but that's more than the scope of this tutorial that's effectively how you make a player select screen by just using a simple frame or two individual character objects